everyone, welcome back to another episode of Strip by Sia, your podcast for strippers, sex workers, and all the fancy naked people in between. I am so excited to bring these two guests onto the show. They are the hosts of a very popular podcast, Oh Those Toes. And if you can guess what that's about, yes, it is all about foot fetishes on this episode. I have not done an episode since season one on foot fetishes. So I'm excited to bring any and top toes onto the show today. Any and top toes, are you there? We are. We are. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for having us. You are so welcome. I'm super excited to have you both on. I know just a little bit about both of you. I know you have a fantastic podcast that I've been learning a ton on. And Annie and I, we actually met on Reddit a month ago or something, <laughs> which is hilarious. Just to get there. <laughs> and we basically, we went on like a podcast thread and we basically hijacked the thread and it was like, we met another person that had another sex worker podcast and we were like, we need to be on each other's shows. Like, you need to come on. And then, yeah. yeah. Very kumbaya, very kumbaya moment. I was really <laughs> <laughs> That was perfect. And I was like, okay, this is great. And... Again, there's just so much speculation around foot fetishes, you know, lots of tabooness around it, but we're going to get into it all. Annie, I know that you have an account and you, uh, like an Instagram account, and you take pictures of your feet. I'm sure you do videos and stuff like that as well. And Top Toes, if I understand your Instagram correctly, is it more of just like a retweeting um, and like sharing of other models' feet and stuff like that? Uh Um Up until recently, it was that way. It started with just a a general reshare, work towards kind of exclusive content from friends and uh, followers and such. And then lately, I kind of shut that all off and have been focusing on actually doing my own photography and then promoting the podcast. So now, uh, for the last month, you'll be seeing only my own foot photography there. Oh, wow. Okay. With some exceptions. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean... I don't know much else about both of you. You two are both strangers to me. So please make your own introduction. Define who you are, what it is that you do, and go. Whoever wants to go first. You can go, Top. We're so polite. I was going to say. (laughs) Top Toast is not on my birth certificate, but alas, uh, you know, the kind of got to keep the the, the worlds apart a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, So I have been... uh, well, a lifelong foot fetishist and in the fetish and kink scene for God, going on, going on almost 25 years now. Wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's hurting to not be out in the world and actually doing anything. But, um, mm, yeah, you know, start, that's what he started at, at. He started at seven. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Uh, I've been, been on and off every platform from like the old uh, alt dot binaries news groups in DOS um, wow. through everything that's come along and landed in Instagram, the Instagram world of, and community about uh, five years ago, okay. which is where I met any. Okay. Um, yeah. That was about five or six years ago. Okay. Um, and so I am any. I used to go by Latina cutie toes, but you know, Instagram has been made it so difficult now. So, uh, know. We're, we're, yeah. So, but that's where we met. And I too am a foot fetishist. I show off my feet on all types of social media. Mm-hmm. I, I basically cater to the foot fetishist. And I am a, a more recently a podcaster, like you mentioned. Yes. And uh, that's been a really exciting venture of ours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I have so many questions. So you both aren't like clients of each other or anything like that. You just know each other from the internet, which is cool. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sadly, in five years, we have yet to meet. Oh. Um, we had plans to, and then COVID struck. Yes. And uh, <laughs> did right. not get that final meet, or first meet and greet, but. Uh, but it's amazing, you know, what kind of a connection we've built and we have. Top Toes is not a customer of anyone's, I mm. I don't think. I'm speaking here for you, but... Um, <laughs> no, you know, no, I'm on the production side. <laughs> right, yeah. Right. So, um, but he, you know, we, we he loves nylons, and I mm-hmm. love nylons, and 
we used to help each other out. I would give him exclusive content and he would post it. And, oh. you know, our friend, our friendship grew from there. So, yeah. That's so cool because you guys have such a great dynamic like on your show and everything and I think it's I think it's wonderful. <laughs> well, I think it's easy when you when you do what you love, you know. Yeah. And, and we do love feet. <laughs> mm-hmm. We yeah. get to get bored of spending 90 minutes a week talking about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's strictly foot fetish, you know, and all the things that come with it, but yes which we're going to get into. So why don't we talk about that? Like, let's talk about foot fetishes. Because for me, like, it was just really, I guess, a simplified version of it. I I wasn't aware, well, not aware. I'm aware of foot fetishes. It's number one fetish in the world. <laughs> it's very popular. Right. Um, but, like, yeah. I, I don't personally like feet. I do not like my feet. <laughs> I think feet are gross, but that's only my, like, my own opinion, but I got into um, foot fetishes in terms of like catering to clients online and then also was doing some in-person sessions like trampling and ball busting and stuff. And yeah, my, my partner is actually a foot fetishist and that is the bulk of my experience with foot fetishes. But can you both speak a little bit more on what is a foot fetish? Because we do have a lot of um, civilian listeners that are on the show too that are not in sex work. So, if whoever wants to provide a definition, we can. Uh, yeah, I, I <laughs> love how you've uh, listened to your show. I love how you flip flop between either the term vanilla or civilian. Yes, I, I kind of yeah. civilian. <laughs> Being a military brat, it, it speaks to me. Um, <laughs> so for the civilians, as you've said, foot fetishism is the number one paraphilia in human sexuality, uh, mm-hmm. meaning sexual attraction to a traditionally non-sexual considered uh, object or focus. But to bring it back around, the, the hardest thing about talking about any fetish is how do you how do you get a breast man to say why he likes breasts? How do you get an ass man to say why he likes ass? They can say all the things they like about it, but there's no real reason they can say why they do. Yeah, and true. Foot fetishism is the same way. It's just another part of the body that I we find attractive, mm-hmm. and then we find all the things that are attractive and sexual can be done sexually with them. The mm-hmm. one thing I will say for foot fetishists, and I, I struggle with the term for any because traditionally I don't want to call her a fetishist, I, but I've recently said she is. She is just the the E instead of the er, if we can use well, the, I, the I engage, terms. <laughs> I engage in the foot fetish, I think is, I mean, I really do engage in it and I love the foot fetish and I, you know, mm-hmm. um, I definitely don't think that feet are gross. I think that feet can be gross. Yeah. <laughs> but just like, yeah, just like, anything, I agree. you know, like asses can be beautiful and they can be gross. I mean, it's yeah, you know. it's just a body part. <laughs> so for the recipients of foot attention, the, that's that half of the fetish. The the human foot has the second closest clustering of nerve endings to the human vagina. So oh, interesting. There are ways to please your partner by touching their feet alone. There are ways to bring your partner to orgasm by touching their feet alone. Although it's sadly it's rare. <laughs> mm, yeah. Oh, that's really fascinating. I didn't realize that. Cool. And yeah. It's, uh, a, it's a fetish for all five senses. It's a, it's a visual, it's a tactile, and it's very much an olfactory. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, The definitely. sound. The, the guys will get off on the sound of bare feet padding around. People like me enjoy the sound of nylon slipping on nylon. So the fifth sense is more of a, yeah, but it's really that, that olfactory thing really pushes it all together uh, when you're you know down there touching somebody's, being near somebody's feet. You've got all that pheromone. Right. So it's it's not surprising that it becomes a, a sexual point of interest. Mm-hmm. Annie, did you want to add something in there? I think you were trying to say something. I no, I it's so interesting. I forgot now. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like wow, this is so cool. Yeah, uh, no, Top Tools does a, a magnificent job of, of explaining that. You know, it, it is it is so common that that people fall into it without even without even having a partner or a foot fetish themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just so many people, but it's so 
taboo that it, a lot of people are not comfortable opening up about it. And yeah. I think that's where our podcast comes in is that we are working towards normalizing it and yes. making it more acceptable. Like it's not a, a freak thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is kind of what your podcast is about in general. So mm -hmm. um, I think it's really great that we're here. Thank you for yeah. having us. Yeah. I mean, again, it's just normalizing it and taking the taboo-ness ta out of it. Because I can definitely say that, like, my partner is embarrassed by it, I find. he He's like, I would die if anyone found out about this. And I've just told him whenever we had sessions when we were still in that client um, relationship, <laughs> client-provider relationship, that I was like, oh, just, like, it's fine. Like, you like what you like, right? And, and you don't have to always have an explanation for it because he's been – trying to just dive deep into like why am I like this why am I like this right and I don't know like with that because I, I was listening to a couple of your episodes too and you were mentioning a little bit about possibly like the history of feed fetish and the psychology behind it in terms of like that fetish being born when the fetishist is a child did you want to yeah. speak about that a little bit yeah I think it's interesting. I, I, I think most fetishists in general, not just with the feet, but especially with the feet, um, they originate at a very young age mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you, women don't walk around with their boobs hanging out or their butts or vaginas hanging out. And but they do with their feet. You know, they have pretty yes. feet, pretty hands and. You know, they make yummy noises when somebody massages them, not necessarily sexual, but, you know, you'll. I think everyone has asked like their nephew or somebody in their family to be like, oh, my feet are aching, like rub my feet. And then there's that little kid rubbing the feet and then you go, oh, that feels so good, you know. And yeah. eventually, eventually, I think once adolescents, once they, you know, puberty hits and they start being aroused by things, mm -hmm. I think the feet are the easiest things to be aroused by. Like your teacher, for example, you can't see any of her body parts really, um, you know, they're in business attire usually. Mm -hmm. And, but what can you see? You can see a nylon leg and a heel, you know, and the foot maybe popping in and out of the heel because they are tired. And then you get a peek at the toes and they're bright red. And God, that story, I've heard it so many times from so many different people that that's how it originates. Interesting. So, yeah. Yeah, that one, the, the, the auntie one, is a, is a predominant fantasy, and uh, it definitely seems to be a lot of people's kind of origin, uh, especially the aunt, because it's kind of the person you see next most that's not blood-related to you. Um, right. So it's okay in that early formative years to sort of sexualize it where you wouldn't with your mother or sister, etc. Right. Yeah, that's so fascinating. I've never like thought about this so much, but it just kind of makes sense. You do have the other side of it where it is born out of a pure submission, mm. where you know possibly the submissive nature is first and the foot is second. That now you have the lowest part of a woman's body, the part that touches the ground, and and everything that goes along with that. Mm, yes. Yes, my partner actually spoke a little bit about that too when he was on the podcast as well. Like, you know, like I want to be able to, and it's more like it came from more of like a foot worshipy stance. Like, right, it's from, from ser being able to service and please. Yes. And yeah, yes. absolutely. I think for adults, for fetishists, for people that have developed the fetish as an adult, I think that's more maybe conditioning mm. you know they're they're watching something sexy they're watching porn or they're watching a person that they admire and the person's doing sexy things with their feet and then before you know it they're looking for the feet and I mean it just as with everything over time it develops and it grows and it it changes and and I think they're very rare I don't think I have many foot fetish I don't know many foot fetishes whose fetish has developed as adults Hmm. Yeah, no, uh, I don't think I know any either. I don't think I've asked. <laughs> no, but we've been trying. As we yeah, talked, we are. The people the King scene, we've been uh, trying, to, uh, not, not trying per se, but definitely had a lot, some eye-opening moments where people with other kinks 
realized where feet can come in and that that aha uh -huh. and so maybe we're not creating foot fetishes but we're bringing foot uh sex to the, the kink masses uh as Ooh. we've said in the past putting it on the menu you don't have to be foot <laughs> right, fetishes exactly. to put feet on the menu right. right exactly yeah and then before you know it you know the feet are uh, uh, just another place where you can enjoy sex right because for example um all of the foot models and i say models loosely right i don't like that term but that's the best way to to um point out these people um women will start off just sort of trying to make money as a way to get attention and they'll right. start without you know being quote unquote a sex worker exactly mm -hmm. so They'll show their feet, they'll take pictures of the feet, and then um, before you know it, you know, a couple months or a couple of years has passed, and you've discovered that you have this extremely powerful thing yeah. that fills you with confidence, and, you know, you dress them up, and there's pedicures, and so before you know it, there's no way in hell that you could be, that you could date someone that will not give attention to your beautiful feet. I mean, it's, wow. an, it's an amazing, um, I mean, it's... Yeah, and so I think that for women, I think that for women that develop it, you know, later, I think that's kind of how it starts. And I think cool. something just popped into my head as we, as you were discussing that, the body dysmorphia. I think that so many of us deal with these days, especially if you're in a position of showing yourself off, and you're not happy with this, that, and the other portion of your body. When you develop into the foot world you don't have a preconceived notion of what a pretty foot or a, a not so pretty foot is. And you react only to the fact that somebody is enjoying your feet and you don't have the preconceived notion. You, you know, you can say my chest is flat. My waist is bigger than I want it to be. Any, any number of things within vanilla sexuality that can turn you off to expressing <laughs> yourself mm -hmm. without the preconceived notion of what a pretty foot is. You are purely reacting to the fact that people react to that. And I, I think it's, empowering to women as yeah. sex workers right. within the foot yep. fetish realm. You don't have Absolutely. anything to live up to. There are no expectations other than what you create. It's it's a magnificent feeling, really. Wow, and I love that. Especially since there are fans of so many different things in the foot world. Some yes. people like wide, some people like narrow, some people like veiny, soft, dry, cracked. The, it runs the gamut. So you you come to the foot world with a neutral playing field of these are my feet exactly as they are. Wow. Okay. Oh my gosh. I have oh so many questions in regards to that. <laughs> okay. Well, we're definitely going to get into that, but like, why don't we go into the subcategories of the foot fetish? Because there are a lot and I'm probably going to miss a whole bunch too. But I mean, I think that these are the larger buckets of foot fetish so um there's trampling there's like squishing there's food crush there's ball busting if you count that impact play sucking and stuff can i can you add more to that is there is there more you've gone to 99 percent the female dominant world which is what most people understand of the foot fetish world and right except maybe when you said impact play mm. um for the male dominant there is bondage there is tickling well oh, forget yeah. male female but um the, the heteronormative terms make it easier to because to, there's no foot fetish or fetish e so i apologize okay. for that no no that's terms. okay thank you the male dominant the tickling the bastinado which is uh caning of the feet and various permutations thereof and then yes everything you said in the other way, because that's the more common expression of the foot fetish. Mm -hmm. And then there is all of the, the accessories, oh all of your, your footwear, legwear, hosiery. Yes. Right. Um, casting, you know, um, oh, yeah. my, my favorite is the um, giantess. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, yes. that's, I mean, uh, there's a, a lot of other things that go with it. Like they like vor and all this other stuff and like face sitting and all this stuff. But um, it, it mostly starts at the feet. So the, you know, so giantess is definitely one of my favorites, but, yeah. but I mean, there's, there's, there's things like so specific. This is, it goes back to what we were talking about, the, the beauty of the foot that you bring it and you, you you create it yourself. Right. So mm -hmm. if you have a big toe, um, if you have the Morton's toe, if you have this tiny pinky toenail, there are 
fetishes that will specifically look for these traits and feet and that's the type that they like wow um you know some like tapered toes um i mean there's just high arches flat feet you know calloused feet there's just so many different things in different ways that you can enjoy it um wow yeah i mean spit is another one right we just i'm not really sure if it's more of a spit fetish but there's a thing with spitting on the feet that is a big deal interesting Um, insect crushing uh i mean yeah there's just there's a lot humiliation joi's i'm what what am i missing can you think of any Um, that i (laughs) joi with joi with ignore um Mm. oh god yeah yeah the ignore is huge yeah okay so yeah i'm seeing like there's a lot of overlap there too with other parts of the kink world yeah without a doubt Mm -hmm. absolutely I mean, there's uh, some like only souls, like they could give, they're not, they don't care about the rest of the foot. They're just a soul fetishist and that's what right. turns them on. Some, some guys are, love a perfect pedicure and some guys only like natural nails unpainted. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh God, we're forgetting dirty feet. Oh, that's a oh, huge yeah. thing. Yes. Um, yeah. They just want absolutely filthy walking around barefoot, you know, feet. Gosh. And then of course there's the, the smell. Some, yes. feet, some, the worse the smell, the better. And some mm-hmm. are so specific that they want a p- specific type of smell. Really? So if you're, so if the feet smell like corn chips, they don't want anything to do with it. If the feet smell like vinegar, they don't want anything to do with it. Or they want specifically feet that smell like vinegar. It's wow, so much to, yeah. yeah so, so much. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> women as, as sex workers, there are some who can make their entire living just on the selling of hosiery or the selling of socks. Yeah. So the guys just want to experience the, the smell. There's a definitely a big market for that. And then there are Huge guys market. like, you know, my husband is a foot fetishist mm-hmm. and he does not like the smell on a sock. So sometimes I'll say like, oh, what does this smell like? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what does this smell like? It smells weird. What does this sock smell like? And he'll be like, oh, I don't want to smell that. But he'll, but he'll smell the, the, you know, he'll, take a whiff of the smell directly from in between my toes. He just doesn't want it on a sock. It does. It doesn't, it's not the same. Oh, really? I mean, they're, yeah. yeah. Which is exactly for this reason why we can have a podcast. Yeah. That's dedicated to just feet. <laughs> you know, like. I totally get it. Like yeah. <laughs> there is, wow. The, it was, it's just so vast. Oh my gosh. Okay. Maybe, just because there's a lot, there might there might be a lot of unfamiliar terms who, for people who are not in the kink community and people who are not foot fetishes, I'm not sure if either of you wanted to do a quick little definition of each category, like trampling, squishing, food crushing, ball busting, or CBT, um, stuff like that. I don't know if either of you want so to do top, that. <laughs> top toes is great. Top toes is amazing at explaining all these things. So Please explain. <laughs> okay. Uh, trampling, specifically being um, men who want to be stepped on, stand, stood on, occasionally jumped on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that definitely works towards crush, which is, you know, doing the same thing to inanimate objects. Sometimes animate objects, sometimes insects, but... Oh. Um, proxy objects um you know food crush then comes out of that and overlaps mm-hmm. with what's called in the regular king community wham wet and messy oh. um i've noticed that in food crush i think we discussed it once if the object that's being crushed uh has sort of a a mini- miniature cherry pie is sort of the perfect you know if if it can be crushed and then have some sort of goo come out yes um it, it L- like a, a fantasy that maybe we mm-hmm. don't want to actually do with our human partners. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it fulfills that fantasy. Uh, right. Obviously, then you're leaning over towards, as you said, um, CBT, cock and ball, tra- uh, torture. cock and torture. Yeah. Torture. Thank you. <laughs> uh, also, ball busting. Mm-hmm. Um, ball busting tends to be a little more in the kicking realm where cbt is all over the place yeah. with how the many many ways you can torture someone's cock and balls yeah 
Um, you know, what I mentioned, I think I defined bastonado when I mentioned it. Bondage always goes hand in hand with feet, and that's pretty clear. Uh, what, what ones have I missed? J- maybe JOI is a good one. Oh, yeah. JOI, yes. Yeah, jerk off instruction, or used to be called jerk off encouragement. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's pretty much a video format of looking at, well, it goes outside the foot fetish, but it's very, very common in the foot fetish of just yes. a video of a woman showing off her feet, maybe playing with her feet a little bit, and then telling her client, customer, video watcher to jerk off, how to jerk off, mm-hmm. and often rolls over into humiliation. Yes. Yes, lots of overlap there. Right. Mm-hmm. Like what what they need to be doing and looking at, and you know how worthless how they are for doing so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're only worthy to look at her feet while jerking off. It's right. a common and scenario. Nothing else. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, gosh, what did we? <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> I, yeah, the the ignore is pretty. You know. Oh yeah, ignore uh, is great. Self explanatory. Yeah. They just want to be looking at the feet well and sometimes that can cross over into a bit of the like the creepy cam guy right and that's where the i think the negative connotation comes in because no one wants to be that creepy guy taking pictures of women as they're walking around at the grocery store or mm-hmm. at the mall you know but but sometimes i have specifically been asked to pretend that that's what's going on so that oh. they can quietly you know take a look and sort of sneaky sneakily take a look at my feet and like made me not know it so mm. um, i haven't been able to in a while but one of my favorite ways to shoot is sort of gorilla gonzo out there in the wild um i <laughs> shot a roll with uh, a model that i took to the casino and we just did the whole thing at the casino and the most fun part is to watch who's watching now, ah. granted, some people are watching because me as the photographer, I'm kneeling down, I'm trying to find angles, whatever. Yeah. But sometimes you catch the glance is actually at the at the model's feet while I'm taking pictures. Right. Right. Wow. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, wow. and I think those are the um, I think those are the the ones that may need the most explanation. explanation? Um, yeah. Everything else is pretty well. Okay, we forgot one. What about foot job? The people yeah. that absolutely obsess over foot jobs. Mm-hmm. It's basically the equivalent of a hand job except with feet. So you're masturbating mm-hmm. the pe- what I what I presume is the penis with your <laughs> feet. I, I we, well, we've we've talked we've about touched you know, on the- and never really got to discuss and maybe doing it shortly an episode on foot sex because Ooh. yeah, uh, yeah. There, there are a lot of permutations, but. Um, the foot job is definitely the most common. Yeah. Um, and unlike okay, where where the hand job gets the, uh, well, I've heard it referred to as the old fashioned. It gets the the connotation of being the the old simple standby, possibly the easiest thing you can do. Well, can you at least give me a hand job? Mm-hmm. The foot job is possibly one of the most difficult sex acts to perform. One. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Not uh, not just well, but just to perform in general. I mean, it requires so much stamina. Yes. It requires oh so much, uh, you know, abdominal strength and, le- you know, your legs. You have to, yeah, you definitely have to. It's very tiring. Unless, unless you just find a good dominant guy who wants you just on your belly, lift up your feet, and he just holds them <laughs> together and goes to town on your arches. <laughs> that, that's the nice easy version maybe i should ask my partner to do that for me female perspective. <laughs> yeah but yeah but um it definitely deserves a little category of its own because there are i've had people that have told me that i've shared you know a lot of people we're also in addition to providing you know content we also are a little bit of uh, psychologists and counselors at times, right? Therapists. Yeah, um, sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've had, you know, many men say that they, you know, they enjoy it so much that orgasming any other way is no longer a viable option. Like it just doesn't work anymore. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, and then wow. there's me and your husband who both prefer it as a foreplay and not the main act. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, which I Definitely. don't think I've ever said, but I'm really grateful that my husband does so <laughs> You know, because, yeah. you know, we, we'll, 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 we'll use it as foreplay and, and do that for a few minutes. But thank God he wants to finish other ways because yeah. 
or, or not, you know, I'd be really fit. <laughs> <laughs> You would you would have calves and thighs of steel. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The totally. Yeah. The, yeah. the unicorn of the foot job world is. Um, <laughs> well, I think it's just a matter of good flexibility. But a girl who can wrap her feet around your dick and give you a blowjob at the same time, she's a keeper. Holy! Oh, okay, that's like pretzel well, style. <laughs> Uh, you know, we, we've never talked about that, Taktos, but we may have to because I am extremely flexible. Me too. Yeah. Me, maybe so. I'll have to try that. Okay. <laughs> I'll get back to you guys. Well, girls, start your yoga regimes now because I've just, <laughs> just told you what the ultimate move it is. <laughs> okay, so this is great. Like, wow, there are just so many subcategories in the foot fetish world. I am amazed and also i feel like and oh I'm wow sure we've missed a we've missed a dozen or more oh there's sure. probably more for sure yeah, absolutely we have yeah we have missed um, a few for sure yeah <laughs> well why don't we talk a little bit about like some of those specific ones like i i'm really interested in hearing about um like the souls because i see that, that i see that a lot on instagram and a lot on reddit too in terms of like different types of souls and and toes and the curling and different types of like I don't know, cracked and dry feet and stuff like that can either of you kind of go into or explain a little bit around that whole type of like admiration well i can definitely talk about uh, toe curling yeah um, please because even even the um even the civilians understand toe curling we always say a good toe curling orgasm but you don't even get yeah. to look at it most of the time no. So it's it's definitely a um, a sort of visual representation of that, uh, and then also just a visual representation of the flexibility of the foot and its ability to grab brought, brings up other ideas, and then you get guys who want to see that that toe curling because then it creates the scrunch with the wrinkles across the soles, which a lot of uh, fetishists admire. Mm-hmm. Why well, I... somebody prefers soles over toes? Couldn't tell you. Yeah, no. Well, I I get asked a lot, and I used to in the beginning get a lot of slack about not posting enough of my souls because oh. from from what I understand, I have – well, I have very wide feet, right? So I have wide soles, and they have this sort of chunky, meaty, pillowy quality to them that I think is sought after, uh, sought after a lot. I'm a toes girl, though. I love toes. Like, mm-hmm. I, I – Love my toes. I love to see other people's toes. I don't get, you know, aroused by them, but I I do love to see them like a good pedicure. Like I can, you know, I love it. So I am what, you know, you call a toes girl. Uh, But I used to get a lot of shit for not posting my souls. Um, And then it was almost like my popularity doubled because I started showing my souls. Oh. And some men like the the wider the better right mm-hmm. and some of them like them to be just absolutely smooth and pink and i mean there's so many different things even just the soles themselves there's so many different things that they like about them uh top toes likes to see them encased in nylon but right. um, also just just positionally i remember pushing you towards a very specific pose which you really uh mastered of pushing the ball of your foot forward um highlighting the fact that the ball of your foot is sort of soft, pillowy, and wide, mm-hmm. which also forms the sort of toe spread, but it also accentuates the arch. And right. to me, it, that particular view just shows off all the curviness of the foot. Yeah, definitely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't tell you exactly why there are, why the souls guys like the soul so much. Yeah, it's very popular. Um, but it is Could very popular could be part of that bottom on the ground, um, the psychology of it. Mm-hmm. But I can't speak for them. It's just, that's a guess. Yeah, that is really interesting too because I remember doing sessions in person and specifically what I thought was interesting was, okay, so my client would lie on the floor and he would like me to sit, say, on the edge of a couch or something and then dangle my feet over him 
I guess, Mm -hmm. to, like, look at my feet. But also, from what I understand of that, that's more of, like, a submissive trait as well. Yeah, I believe in in the photographing video world, we call that the worm's eye view. The worm's eye view, interesting. Yeah. Just really fascinating, I think. The uh, guys that like the giantess, that's the view that they like the best as well. Mm. Like, as close to the bottom as you could possibly get the camera, that's what they want to see. Because, especially with giantess, like, all the almost all the other fetishes you can sort of live out, you can act out in real life. But the giantess is just obviously not, not possible. Mm-hmm. So, um, so they want the widest soles and the biggest feet and the yeah. tallest women to pretend like they're these giant women. Mm-hmm. And that's the view that they like. They want to be at the bottom because they're tiny. They're itty bitty. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it's really fun for me. I really like that giant test um, side of it because mm-hmm. uh, it's sometimes it's not even uh, sexual. Sometimes it's really innocent and like, you know, fun for she's coming and you know it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it's really it's, it's really fun because you get to act and pretend and play and you know and not mm. necessarily have to do any of the other stuff so yeah lots um, of role play some, involved in that yeah some of them just they just want to be you know stomped to death by yeah. a giant <laughs> foot you know, like, no, no, no orgasming involved. They just want to die that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, actually trying to get one giant test on the show, but it's a work in progress. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're actually, um, I think pretty soon here, um, we're going to be working on one as well. So cool. it's just, it's really popular. And, um, I know top toes isn't a big fan of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, you know, but I I love it. So. I'm yeah. always a fan of finding out what makes our our fans tick, though. So yeah, yeah. Like I recently, we're trying to figure out what makes the pedal pump guys tick. Uh, oh and gosh, guys I totally who, forgot. Yeah, Wait, what's pedal pump? It just kind of came to my head with the role playing because there are guys who want to see you drive. There oh, are guys who want literally. to see you. Uh, yeah, just from like the under the dash perspective of watching you drive, sometimes the more aggressive, the better. And a lot of them have the fantasy of just watching you not be able to get your car to start. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, a, like a damsel in distress kind of thing. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Okay, cool. I didn't even, I was like, what's that? I like, think it literally is what it is. Pedal pump. Yep. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yep. It's I so to cool. I'm usually the- popular. <laughs> I used to think in the beginning that it was that they really what they had was kind of a combination fetish, like they liked cars as well, like it was a car fetish and a foot fetish. Yeah. Or and um, and and some of that is true, but there's just something about you know a woman driving and just revving it all the way. Yeah. That is you know really sexy to some people, and and also what I have heard too is the angle of the foot. As it's going up and down on the pump, mm. so the, it, it's usually arched and it's on your tippy toes, and so I mean, even within pedal pumping itself, there's so much to to learn, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I appreciate how much like detail you're going into it, and it, it just it makes sense from like the way that you explain it. So thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, you mentioned, um, Annie, you mentioned something uh, that I thought was interesting, too. You're mentioning something about it's not always about the orgasm. When it comes to foot fetishes, it's a lot of the other stuff, the the role play and everything else. Did either of you want to speak a little bit about that part? Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I think mostly it is, about the orgasm or everything leading up to it. I mean, there's also, you know, orgasm denial where we just, and I keep a couple of pets that I play with online. And so Mm -hmm. sometimes it may crosses over into like dom sub relationships, right? Yes. Which I'm not, which I'm not an expert on or anything, but a lot of times they don't want to orgasm. They want Mm -hmm. me to hold off for days, weeks, even, you know, I, oh, wow. maybe not months, but, <laughs> but definitely long periods of time without the orgasm. Wow. Um, I, I want to say that the, the giant test fetish is the one where there is not necessarily an orgasm 
um, Mm -hmm. at the end. It's just a matter of uh, being uh, cared for. Mm. Uh, You know, they want attention. Like there's some giant test guys that want to be, you know, devoured and squished and all that. Um, But there's others that want to be kept as pets. Uh, so, oh. you know, their, their, their size is slightly in their fantasy world, their size is slightly bigger. So maybe the size of a, a cat or, an, or a dog, they're that tall. Right. And, um, and so it's just a matter of, of, of caring for them. So, you know, we can brush their hair and we can, you know, carry them around in our pocket and our purses. Mm-hmm. We can make, make force them to clean our feet and in between yes. the toes because their arms and hands are the perfect size to get under the nail. You know, <laughs> and, so you're stepping into um, yeah more of a female M D L B. I'm used to saying D D L G is the more commonly used one, but the okay. the mommy dom little boy. Oh yes, um, right. The but expression of that. But it's, you know, they don't want to be um, but, little, littles. They don't want to be littles. Right. They want to be... There's a little they, less age play, very, very similar um, thought and structure. very similar dynamic, too. Yeah. It still it, makes you a very mommy dom when you're playing with somebody of yes. that bent. But, mm-hmm. but the feet have to be involved. You know what I mean? Like, right. that's why... Because giant test fetishists can reach out to any content producer and get, you know, what they need. But... I cater the foot community, so that so my, all the ones that I deal with always involve the feet somehow. Right. Almost always. Yeah. Right. Oh, sorry, I've had one in particular that comes to mind that's really unique, I think. He likes sort of a comic feel to it all, um, and so we role-play that my foot becomes sort of rubbery or doughy. Oh. And I can stretch it, and it's almost like, and I hate to reference a, a kids movie, but it's almost like the Incredibles, <laughs> Elastigirl. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and so we have all of these scenarios where, oh my gosh, my foot, look, and then I step on it, and it kind of, kind of squishes into and morphs into a different shape, and I can do all kinds of crazy things. I can wrap my feet around his entire head wow. a couple of times. And, you know, it's just, it's really fun. But <laughs> orgasm is never discussed and it's never yeah. allowed. It's never talked about. It we just, it doesn't come into play. It's just, it's not in the conversation. You know, the role playing of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. I guess going along with popular themes for, for both of you, I guess, what are the most popular forms of? I guess, content that you share on your social media and your platforms. I'm going to have Top Toast take this over because I really think it's nylons. Mm. I- <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. At least in the Instagram world, we have noticed something that got dubbed the Top Toast effect, uh, especially when I was doing a lot of reposting and, and just basically helping people build their traction. Mm-hmm. Um, that as a model, a photographic model, we'll, we'll talk about just, just straight photographic content, Right. Uh, as they built and as I promoted them, they would find that the, the photos they posted bare would get not nearly the traction or likes as the photos that they posted in nylons. <laughs> um, really? And I think there okay. is a lot to be said for, you know, the, the fans of nylon speak stronger. It's, we've discussed it a million times. It's, it's makeup for the feet and legs. Mm-hmm. It's, Sometimes it can be viewed as sort of the wrapping paper of your gift. That's definitely the most popular uh, among my photography. Definitely the stuff that's obviously implied to be out in the world tends to become much, much more popular. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that there's a little, maybe a little bit of a, a voyeuristic bent, you know, shooting in a studio or shooting in a, in a bedroom or whatever, but shooting outdoors where... The, the scene of the photo shows that other people are watching this too. I did a, uh, a whole photo shoot on a, a commuter train. Oh. Um, it it cut, came from my own head because it reminded me of my days of being a commuter and maybe trying to sneak a peek at the, the tired commuter's feet as they stretched out and popped off their shoes. Hmm. And I tried to just recreate that experience for our viewers. Wow. So voyeuristic content does very well. Okay. I mean, I have a hashtag, you know, called Annie's Nylons because it's so popular. Wow. 
I, and I do happen to love nylons. It's just that I live in South Texas and it's just not possible for me to wear them <laughs> you know, every day. It would just be crazy. Um, but, but when I go through a period of where I haven't posted too many nylons, I start to get complaints. Uh-huh. Uh, and when I go when, and then when I go through a period where I'm posting only nylons and then I stop, I start to get, you know, like, Hey, where's, you know, and how come? And, you know, so, um, yeah, but you know, at, at the end of the day, I post whatever I want. I'm very, I mean, yeah. I cater to the foot fetish community, mm-hmm. but I'm very, um, I'm very different in my page in that I, I really don't care what everyone else is demanding of me. I just post my everyday life sort of. Yeah. Um, it's very natural. It's very organic. Um, of course we pose and have photo shoots sometimes, but for the most part, it's more like a life in uh, the day of, you know, of any feet or whatever. So, yeah. um, but I do, I do find that I, I feel like if I would post more nylons, I think my, I would be more popular because there's just, the nylon guys are just die hard and wow. they're loyal and they love what they love. And, and I think it's rare. It's easy to find a lot of feet. It's a little bit more difficult to find nylons in younger models nowadays. Like they don't really wear too many nylons, I think. Really? Okay. Well, yeah, any, I, <laughs> any listeners? I mean, I mean get on correct nylons. me if I'm wrong, Top Toes. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like. Yeah, the younger generation is definitely not. Uh, they, they haven't tapped into it. And also, yeah, you get. There's a lot of Florida kind of feel to the Instagram foot world. You know, people think, oh, feet, flip-flops, beach, that's what the foot fetishists want. And, Mm -hmm. um, well, Sia, you're you're up in the the great white north there. Yeah. And I wear nylons a lot. (laughs) For us, uh, nylon is almost uh, just a necessity. It's half the time something you're – half the year it's something you're just putting under your trousers just so you don't freeze to death on the subway. (laughs) Yeah. Wait, uh, Top Toes, where are you located? I am in the greater New York City area, but I spent a lot of my life in in Montreal. Oh, okay. Yeah, love Montreal, love New York. Have not been to Texas yet, any, but I've, how's it down there actually right now? Um, it's it still... it's hot and humid most of the time. Oh, you yeah. Know, if, we're, if we're not freezing and uh, yeah. <laughs> living without power and water, then it's mostly, you know, really hot and humid. I was going to say, uh, like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's got beautiful lakes and rivers. I mean, Austin is really great. I'm pretty yes. close to Austin. I'm, like, 45 minutes away from Austin, and mm-hmm. that's really very hipster kind of a place to visit. Yeah. Uh, I think if you're going to visit Texas, you should definitely visit because you want to do the – the um see the lakes and rivers and yeah the beaches not so much you know. <laughs> beautiful landscapes absolutely beautiful sure. landscapes yeah and barbecue <laughs> uh, yeah i'm not a huge fan of barbecue but i wasn't oh, okay. born i wasn't born in texas so gotcha. i you know i feel like but i i'm not a huge fan of barbecue but i know that people definitely come to texas for the barbecue it's got amazing places mm-hmm. I mean, really i've heard yeah. Well, barbecue, <laughs> barbecue is delicious and it smells great. And on the topic of smell and scent, <laughs> you guys like that segue? <laughs> that is great. That, that's a segue worthy of us. Absolutely. Let's talk about scent because I feel like scent is such a huge thing because I've had a some very, very loyal sock buyers and slipper buyers. So do we want to speak? Like, I don't know if either of you want to touch on that topic which is another big one as well <laughs> I, um, I touched on it earlier that it's it's pheromones absolutely mm-hmm. um and being that most people do have sweatier feet than other parts of their body it's concentrated pheromones right. and you mentioned sock buyers slipper buyers i mentioned nylon buyers mm-hmm. and you will find that they are never one and the same your right. slipper buyers are your slipper buyers, your sock buyers are your sock buyers, because as any pointed out, the smell is different based on what it's captured in or based on what it's generated in with the, the level of sweat. Yes. You know? Yeah. So, and, and, and even if you wear, even if it's a, the same exact brand of sock, if you wear it with a different type of shoe, the smell will be different. I mean, the leather oh. and, the, you know, all oh. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, Good point. The, the, the smell of feet in nylon that came out of leather shoes is, well, my opinion, probably the best one. But 
all so drastically different from anything else. Mm-hmm. Right. Then the, then the nylon in a sneaker, for example, or, or a boot. I don't have particularly sweaty feet, so my scent, it, I have to build it up. My feet don't smell naturally. Mm-hmm. So I have to collect bacteria in my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've been told that I, you know, have a slightly mildewy, <laughs> uh, sweet smell oh. to it. Yeah. Um, if I wear them long enough, like my longest pair, I want to say, has been about a month. Wow. Uh, if I wear them, yeah, if I wear them long enough, um, they'll start to smell chocolatey, which is what? really odd yeah i don't know i wish that i could have some scientists analyze this for me because i have no idea why um, that's bizarre but it all also depends on what i've eaten you know um mm. if if whatever you're eating definitely affects the you know your body scent and then of course you add lotion to that or oils or whatever else you wear whatever you you wash with because you know we're still washing our feet and bathing and all of that yeah but the most popular ones are, like I mentioned, vinegar. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's like cheese. Oh. Uh, you know, like a Parmesan cheese. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. And then there's and then there's corn chips, like just straight up Frito Lay corn chips. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah. Which is probably why I don't like Frito Lay corn chips. Like, <laughs> I just think we need to we need to take back language and find better because all the things, all the terms we use to define a sense that we uh, we the fetishists enjoy are not particularly attractive sounding. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Interesting. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. This is super fascinating. I feel like I, I'm just really glad that you mentioned. Like, it depends on what you're wearing, like the type of socks, the type of nylons, what you're wearing it in, all those things, mm-hmm. and like the oils and all all your sweat and everything. They all like mix together into your unique scent. Right. <laughs> Right. Um, and I mean, it's just like when you buy perfume, right? You you smell a certain scent on someone. You go, God, what are you wearing? And they're like. You know, I'm wearing, you know, Escape or whatever. Yeah. And then you go and buy that and then you put uh, put it on and it's not the same. Totally not the yeah. same. Yeah. Different bodies, different pheromones. It's all different and it makes it unique <coughs> to you. Me. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, I also want to talk about marketing and selling different kind of platforms that you two use. I know you both are using Instagram. <laughs> That's that's definitely our first and foremost. Or at least it's where we met. It's kind of our home base. Yeah. Um, and in the last couple of years, it's been a terrible place to actually try to sell from. But yes. it is a place to still that has good content interaction that you can then kind of push people to other places for the the purchasing for the marketing part of it. Twitter simply, I keep a Twitter. I keep a Twitter to support the people who keep a Twitter. Um, I'm a big retweeter and pretty much nothing else, but it moves so fast. It's hard to have traction there. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Foot community stuff is not going viral in the Twitter sense of viral whatsoever. No, no. Now everybody's moving to OnlyFans. Yeah. Either, you know, might see a big migration from Insta- what's going on on Instagram to be on OnlyFans on a free account where premium <laughs> content gets paywalled. That seems to be the mm. up-and-coming style. And yeah. I think what's turning people off of it is it, it, they make it difficult to get on OnlyFans, which is good because it, it implies they're doing good privacy, they're doing good age check, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we all popped on Instagram <laughs> for the first time, gave a phone number, and we're in. Yeah. So simpler, that level but... of effort, especially for the potential buyers, that level of effort might be a little bit um, disconcerting. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you on that. Because I think OnlyFans, um, you need to have like your li- a driver's license, um, some other kind of verification platforms so they know it's you. I mean, I, I appreciate the vetting process because <coughs> there are a lot of scammers in any type of sex work. And... It's good, I would say, on a provider's point of view, but on a buyer, it's just a little bit more of a hassle, as you would say. I welcome that, though. So I've I never had any... I'm fairly new to the OnlyFans crowd. I, I never had any intention of having one at all. Mm-hmm. I'm moving over to OnlyFans out of uh, just out of 
pure frustration with Instagram. Um, I mean, Instagram is my favorite platform. I mean, I have a Reddit and now we're on FetLife and I have a many vids, which I've never really worked. I I probably there's a couple videos on there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I'm moving over to OnlyFans. Um, I've created a free account, just like Top Toast said, where I'm going to post all of the content that I would have posted on Instagram. My Instagram page is very, I want to say, PG. I don't show anything rarely above the thigh. Um, So it's mostly toes and soles. That's really what it is. If I'm doing a nylon shoot for top toes, I'll, you know, show more thigh and a little bit of ass, but rarely, okay. rarely do I. Possibly I, a coffee I, cup in front of the gusset of your pantyhose. <laughs> that, that's probably the, like, the dirtiest pic I sent you. Just, you know, it was like nylon my least. legs. Yeah, like nylons with the legs, you know, pulled up and there's a coffee cup covering the goods. But, you know, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, my page is very... Um, just very PG. I don't post anything really inappropriate. There's no, there's no nipples. There's no crack. There's yeah. no, not even dressed booty shots. I don't post that. And still, you know, we get, we get deleted, you know, yep. twice. And yes. so I'm, I'm moving over to OnlyFans just out of frustration to Instagram. So my account is free and I'm going to post everything I used to post on Instagram there gotcha. with the the videos being, you know, you, you're able to buy the videos. Mm-hmm. Also, though, I'm not a very high content producer. I really don't sell a lot. Mm-hmm. That's not really my goal. At some point it used to be and I and I did cater to that a lot, but not really. Like I rarely sell videos. I rarely make customs. And I think the customs that I make now are mostly for already established customers people that i've known for years and years that have bought for me for years and years yeah and that's why i appreciate OnlyFans because i don't have to deal with all the throwaway accounts anymore yes you know um so i think we're uh, definitely both in the um minimal part-time sex worker category yeah Uh, we're you were maintaining day jobs this is an expression of our our fun our interest our fetish and if there's a little bit of money to be made in it um you know for me to help somebody else maybe maybe they are a little more pro Mm -hmm. or a little more money focused uh for me to do their photography videography or you know for the minimal uh monetization of the podcasts that's covering our expenses more or less nothing more right 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 which brings us to the foot party if i can yeah uh, please talk about that of course yeah um yeah we we had our our um our virtual foot party it's our very first one um and we charged a nominal fee of like five bucks and it was really just to cover the cost but but even that even then i think we just you know, kind of let whoever in, (laughs) um, but yeah, we, we put together, you know, virtual foot party. We, I ended up calling it a, a meet. What did I say? Top toes, meet, feet, and greet. The feet, meet, and greet, or the meet, feet, and greet. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It actually slid away from our original intention. I was listening to yet a third podcast, another fetish podcast, and they were talking about virtual parties as a, a, in other fetishes as a way to get around the COVID restrictions. Yeah. Uh, again, Canadians, a little harder lockdown. Mm-hmm. So they had talked about having been on a basically Zoom-based virtual, I think it was a, a pet play party. Okay. And I said, we could do this. Yeah. Um, besides the fact that there aren't that many foot parties in my region anyway, oddly enough. <laughs> well, there are, but they're the hideously commercial version that I'm not a fan of. Uh, you know, okay. As far as local kinksters getting together for a foot play party, there mm-hmm. just aren't enough of us when you have a play party. It's BDSM bondage, more or less. Right. And so we started, and of course, the people who reach out to us are our, our friends. They're mm-hmm. the first wave of people who want to get interested. Of course. And some of them are, le- you know, foot fetish content providers more than out there in the world kinksters. And so a few of them kind of noted, mm, I don't know if I'm going to want to spend uh, 90 minutes or more watching some guy pull his pud to me. Mm-hmm. And so that's the problem with Zoom. You can't close off or there's no way to, if you're at an in-person foot party, you tip the girl and that is your, you know, and, and 
the agreement that you can uh, expose yourself is there. Right. Even if we did a tip based, you'd tip the one person and then show your dick to 12. And it just doesn't yeah. work. It doesn't really work that way. <laughs> <laughs> so we said, what if we kind of make this more about a sort of version of a live podcast? We didn't publish it as part of the podcast, but we, you know, and ran it that way. And okay. had an absolute blast. Oh, God, it was so much fun. Yay. So we... Uh, some of us displayed our feet, you know, the, the women, we displayed our, our nylons, our legs, our feet. Uh, I even showed you, you know. my socks. <laughs> you, <did. laughs> you sure did. And then you, you did tell me that when somebody requested that we do the sitting on the, on the feet, you, yep. you told me you did it too, but I didn't see it because I flipped around and showed you the back of my feet. Yeah. Yeah. You got to see the top yeah. of those Bluetian soles. <laughs> Jeans and socks. <laughs> yeah, um, we played games. We, you know, we drank. We laughed. Oh, um, we drank. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was just a lot of fun. You know, it was a uh, smaller than we thought. Like a lot of the people that were going to be there ended up not being able to. Mm. You know, some fell off last minute. Some new ones joined in. But it turned out to be. The perfect amount of people for us to give everyone undivided attention. Okay, oh, it was fantastic. It was fantastic, and we're definitely going to do it again. Cool. Um, so we're we're gonna we're gonna do two different versions of it, though. We're gonna do one that's more a sort of PG. I don't. I hate saying PG, but I don't know what to no, say. Like, it's not gonna that's... be X rated. It's not gonna be X rated. But then I think at the end of the day, we're perverts. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and... <laughs> we have to figure out the logistics of how we do the one that really is a, a virtual sex party right um, yeah well, a, a virtual fetish party rather than a virtual conversation among fetishes right, right. both yeah. have their place absolutely don't want to sure. give up one for the sake of the other but we need to figure out the logistics of okay how do we deal with the guy who's just spanking it on cam yeah, um, yeah exactly. because at the end of the day we also just want to give her an opportunity for this guy to want to spank it on cam you know yeah for sure <laughs> yeah yeah the so, uh, side of us yeah right so we're gonna have a couple of people that are you know going to be exhibitionist and like with their part sometimes with their partners i think you know couples doing their own thing and then others that are just sort of camera off watching you know mm. in the dark shadows of the zoom party so. yeah little black square but yeah because yeah. <laughs> cool. we're, we're fetishy and we like um you know all that kind of stuff so uh we can't physically go to any fetish parties because of covid of course uh, so we're just gonna you know bring a little bit more sanity with our insanity I love that idea. <laughs> I think that's great. Well, you, you're going to have to um, keep me posted on when that's going to be. Like, this ep- this episode is going to be sometime, I think, on March 21st is when it's going to be released. So if you have a date. So, yeah, the first, well, pardon, the, well, it'll be the second party is going to be right about contemporaneous to that, oh. possibly within that week. We don't have it nailed down, but we can definitely uh, keep me online posted. notify you. Yes. And then the yes. other one's going to be maybe the. The, the following one will be maybe mid-May. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. And I could plug it in the show notes. So, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, that'd really be great. Cool. Thank you. No problem. And I guess I know <clears throat> Top Toast, go, just going back to the whole platform thing and, and also any of your decision to move from Instagram or slowly move from Instagram to OnlyFans. Top Toast, I know you want to kind of um, mention briefly um, about Sauce, Sauce Festa. Yeah, and well. the, the reason, I think the reason a lot of people, especially people not in the U.S., don't realize, everybody says, oh, Instagram is this, Instagram, no, Instagram is responding to the fact that Mark Zuckerberg, who, you know, with Facebook buying Instagram, mm-hmm. doesn't want to go to jail for us. And yeah. I, I can actually respect that. We know that we are playing outside the terms of service because even though maybe we'll grumble and we'll say, oh, it's just feet, mm-hmm. but it's it's sexual to us. We're so sexualizing we're, feet, yes. We yeah. know we're playing that boundary. Um, the law is terrible. Yes. Um, and there was another one that I tried to look up. There's a one that passed this past October, which actually made it even more draconian, oh, uh, which is why the, the TOS stepped up again. And that new uh, idea of you can't do implied nude, you can't do nude hidden behind an emoji or hidden behind your hand yeah. got added to the TOS with that second act. And even though 
American politics here. Speaker Pelosi actually introduced a bill to try to rein back in FOSTA SESTA to mm. try to um, take out the part that was hurting the legitimate legal sex worker. Mm-hmm. That seemed to die on the floor. Uh, I've uh, been on a campaign to try to get a petition going that's yeah. just taken a long time to put together. But we, in the end, we know on a vanilla um, social media that we're breaking the rules yeah. or pushing the boundaries very Pushing hard. the boundaries. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and it's just by comparison, Twitter has the same TOS. It's just they don't have a, an evil robot monitoring. <laughs> so everybody yes. says, "Oh, but I can get away with it on Twitter." Well, no. Oh, you are getting away with it on Twitter. Yeah, private platform. Totally cool. They're very, very different. Mm-hmm. You know. And then, FetLife is now seeing some a little bit of the pushback of we were never the sell stuff platform, mm-hmm. but it's a platform that has the age restrictions, that has the privacy, and they can skirt FOSTA SESTA with that. Right. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Like, well, another thing that is happening with Twitter, too, I know that some sex workers are getting booted off or suspended or or banned from Twitter now, which is we're kind of speculating that it might be the next platform to put in a stricter terms and services and conditions. It literally has the same terms of services. It's just less monitored. Oh, okay. Um, So they're they're going to be monitoring it. It more. For right now, the only monitoring of posts in violation are other Twitterers. Right. Isn't that the word? Other parties on Twitter. Whereas uh, the Zuckerberg Empire has some amazing AI mm-hmm. that now just got improved too, that it can read words in flat images. Really? So, yeah, even if you're not typing something words, it's reading the words. It's Google Glass, I think, is pretty much the technology. It's oh, reading yeah. the words that are in your picture, on your picture. Wow. And if you're tapping one of those words that implies that you are soliciting anything, soliciting an adult service, Mm -hmm. that's the worst of it. It's not, for a lot of models, they're screwing up. It's not what you're showing. It's what you're saying about what you're showing. If you're talking about Mm -hmm. pushing your traffic to OnlyFans (laughs) or I sell this or even link in bio is getting... Yeah, um, that's getting questionable. Right, yeah. Yeah, lots of accounts getting shadow banned or, again, like, suspended. Slash... I got shadow banned this morning for, for like storming somebody. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I, I think... The bots uh, see me as a bot because I do have such a large following and followers. If I spend a morning while I'm waiting, drinking coffee and waiting for this recording to come up and I'm just flipping through and liking a whole bunch of stuff, all of a sudden I trip the bot sensor. Right. They think that my page is a robot, and I get uh, <laughs> You're too blocked fast. off for a while. Oh my gosh! Jeez. I, I think my my biggest problem with it is uh, like just like Chopto said, like you understand we're pushing the boundaries, right? Yes, I post only my feet, but I, you know, say sexy things about them, and you know, and I think it really bothers me that I can't post my toes even without a caption or hashtags. That page, that picture gets taken down, but then I go into my feed, and the first thing I see is like you know somebody's asshole or you know, like, yes, <laughs> and, and and it really bothers me because I'm like I'm looking at this girl's vagina, like her lips are hanging out of that thong, and that's okay, but my neon toes are not like I. It just drives me crazy. Or two yeah. days ago, we tried to get a um, a, a child porn page deleted. And we right. had an identical message that says, we have reviewed your submission, but it, we find nothing. Like mm. Instagram, you find nothing about this child sexualization, oh, but you're attacking us fit, foot people. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then and, we and... have that third big problem, which is the other models attacking each other yeah. because they feel if they can get a page deleted and they get that much more of the market share. Yeah. Which I hate to see any kind of competitiveness at all in any time of in any type of sex work. It just like breaks my heart. Like you should just be in this together, you well, know? There's enough dick for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> well even you know, I can even deal with the competitiveness like it's 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 human nature and some people can 
help it more than others, right? Yeah. I understand, right? You want to outdo this person, so you post, so you work harder. You post better pictures. You take better pictures. You invest more money in your in your attire and your photography, your lighting, whatever. Fine. Yeah. But but I will never understand the reporting of other pages because you're not only hurting these people, you're hurting yourself because yeah. now we're a problem child to Instagram. You know, yeah. the foot community is a problem child. And so, <sighs> you know, I'm going to roll over to my OnlyFans and, you know, post whatever the hell I want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Although and, there's, some, uh, there's some restrictions on OnlyFans too, but I guess it's more to protect children. I believe like some words are, you can't post certain words or certain links and stuff too, but it's still more open <laughs> at right. least yeah, yeah. on Instagram. Anyways. <laughs> I'll, I'll roll there eventually. Uh, yeah. You know, since, since the birth of the internet in the 90s, I'm on my eighth platform anyway, so oh my I'll get there. My biggest problem is in my state, my driver's license has a, an extension rather than take, letting us go to the DMV. Oh. And um, it, nobody recognizes that because it's a state law instead of a federal. So oh. I'm rocking an expired license. I can't sign up <gasps> until I can rectify that. Oh, God. Right. And that, that's exactly why it took me so long to do mine, because I just got my driver's license. It was expired in, like, April of last year. And so I finally was able to get an appointment to go in, and I just got it a couple days ago. And so oh. now my OnlyFans is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, but we'll see Top Toes over there soon enough. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm actually going to do content, too. I, cool. I'm just going to see if, well, not, maybe some of my photography and also maybe some just uh, audio clips of me reading erotica, because I, I got into the podcasting thing when enough people told me, I love hearing your voice. I'm like, yes, okay. I agree. Yeah, we do, <laughs> we do get that a lot. We do get a lot of uh, requests for Top Toast erotica. Oh, I love it. <laughs> we gave it as our Christmas gift. <laughs> So fun. Yeah. So we fun. Did, we, read, we wrote and read some erotica at our Christmas special. Uh, it was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a bit of questions that came in from the audience. So I think it's time for us to kind of move on to that section of the show. So, yeah, and either of you feel free to, me- uh, feel free to answer. So the first one is best ways to get customers, question mark. Provide oh, uh, good content. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I want to say be genuine. Like, mm-hmm. have a work ethic. Don't uh, lie, cheat, or steal. You know, when you, you know, stick to your word. If you say you're going to produce content on a certain day, stick to that. Um, yeah. Definitely don't keep, don't scam anybody out of their money. Like, I, I hear sometimes people saying, well, you know, he paid me X amount for this custom, but then he was annoying and pissing me off, so I blocked him instead. And, Aww. well, but did you refund that money? Like, did you yeah. refund that money? So, because word of mouth, I think, is going to be your best way mm-hmm. yeah, to uh, establish your reputation, a good reputation as a seller. 100%. Yeah. And I'll add to that, um, be good to your repost shout-out community, uh, mm-hmm. having formerly represented it, but especially when you don't know what hashtags are going to be banned this week. Um, if mm-hmm. somebody else is giving you the time of of their platform to promote you, just you know, treat them well. Uh, remember, mm-hmm. they're not repost robots, and it's also for us Instagram specifically. It's not Twitter where you just click repost. Um, right. You know, the the people who dedicate their time to promoting the the models on Instagram dedicate a lot of time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you get into selling pictures of your feet? I'm going to say start off with a really good pedicure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great advice. Yeah. How do or how uh, yeah. did? Because the how story do? I've heard the most is that somebody got comments from a fetishist on a vanilla page when they maybe did that typical feet up at the beach pose. <laughs> um, right. And yeah. realized it was something. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to invest. It takes a lot of time. I think people have a misconception that foot fetishist will buy any foot picture for mm-hmm. a ridiculous amount of money. And that is not the case. That's not the case. 
you have to build rapport and relationships. So all of these pages that start off and they're, they have two followers and in their profile, it says no DMs, business only, like cash mm. up here. Yeah. Um, there, it's, it's not going to work because you're not just selling a picture of your foot. These guys can buy a picture of feet anywhere. Yeah. I mean, there are, you know, hundreds of thousands of people out there. In fact, they can Google it and get it for free, right? Yeah. So yeah. It, you have to build connections. You have to build rapport. And if you don't want to see dick pics in your inbox, don't start a page. You're not going to yeah. sell foot pictures. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Come in and acknowledge that you're a sex worker. Mm-hmm. You, exactly. You know, yes. You've exactly. got to. And you got to have that mindset a little bit. Uh, we'll take it to stripping. You know, any stripper worth their salt is uh, pouring on the charm in the back room or in the lap dance or whatever. You know, exactly. Yes. You can. Yeah. You could do just the stage and you know get random tips thrown on the on the ground and just show what you choose to show in your routine, but you got to take it to the back room and that involves charisma, charm, connecting Everything. with people. Yeah, that's yeah. the biggest part of it, honestly. So. Yeah, thanks. Great advice there. What types of photos to take? Question mark. Take a bunch and see what people react to. Yeah. <laughs> I and but also I think find what's unique and different about your feet. Mm-hmm. And then focus on that because that's gonna be your niche, right? So if and I've seen some ugly ass feet that are extremely popular, let me tell you. So, um, <laughs> right. So if say you have a bunion, right, don't try to hide your bunion, take close-ups of those bunions and market yourself as a bunion page, there you know? You um, so find that thing that's unique about your feet, whether that's high arches, a thick meaty heel, skinny feet, veins, uh, wow. you know, find that thing that most people have noticed about your feet and then focus on that for a little bit. And take quality pictures. I can't say this enough. I see so many half-assed, blurry pictures. Oh, gosh. And, you know, like, take a qual- quality pictures, post only quality things, and don't give it all away for free. You know, like, I see girls that post 100 pictures of the same pose or slightly different pose. And once you've posted 100 of those pictures, no one else is going to need or want to buy anything. Supply and yeah. demand. Right? Yeah. For sure. When I when I shoot a roll, well, I, I, I do digital camera. Did, uh, pardon me, uh, iPhone camera. Mm-hmm. It's totally fine with good lighting. An iPhone camera is more than you need for resolution when somebody's primarily watching it on an iPhone anyway. Lighting's important. But I will shoot 500 pictures and maybe 100 of them will get used. Right. You know, the, the subtle nuance of, of moving of the foot or moving of my angle you know, it may be technically a picture of the exact same pose, but the one that happens where the angle of the foot, the angle of the camera, the lighting clicks, that's the one that goes up and the other three versions of that get thrown away. If you're ticklish, would it po- would this pose as a huge problem? Can you believe, Tostos? Can you believe we forgot to mention tickle? tickling? <laughs> no, I, I did. I did when I said that uh, we weren't concentrating on the male dom type stuff. Uh, right. if, t- if you're ticklish, <laughs> does it create a problem in what? It doesn't create a problem in uh, shooting photos and videos. No. Unless you are dealing in tickle videos, in which case it's quite helpful. <laughs> um, right. And the tickle community is huge. It's and... huge. It is huge. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I would say don't look at it as a problem. Look at it as, holy hell, you've got super sensitive ticklish fe- feet and that is going to sell. You've got now, another fetish that you just dove into. Yeah. If you're talking about is yes. ticklish a problem when your partner is a foot fetishist and wants to rub your feet, you know, <laughs> it just depends on his well, touch and how you react. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you could end up kicking someone in the face that way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, being you could ticklish end up having is, a lot of fun. It, being ticklish is definitely a problem when you're getting a pedicure. Uh, I just went the other day and, oh, gosh, I don't know what she was doing, but that <laughs> scrubby brush on the bottom, I just it took everything in me to stay still. Yeah, so that is definitely a problem. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> was there something someone asked you to do that made you feel super uncomfortable? For me, 
yes, there's, there are always things that people ask that make me feel uncomfortable. For sure. um, uh, and, and, and I've learned not to, it's not uncomfortable anymore. It was definitely really uncomfortable at first. I'm going to say the most uncomfortable thing that someone asked me to do, it, one was uh, to pretend that I was shoving my toe in their ass. Oh. And and role play that. So that was but that was very, very early on and it made me so uncomfortable. And I didn't I didn't do it for a long time. Okay. Now I'd be like, yeah, where do you want me to put it? Right. <laughs> uh, um and and then two is I'm really uncomfortable when someone asks to see uh a fa- my family members' feet. Oh. So I've I've had people ask to see my daughters, my sisters, my moms. Oh, that is and that's weird. just, yeah, that, and then the killing of animals, right? Like, oh my gosh, squ- squishing of a chicken with my bare feet is so, I've asked, been asked that several times, What? possibly by, possibly by the same person, just different accounts. Maybe. Um, yeah. And that is extremely uncomfortable for me. For sure. Um, what about you, Top Toes? Yeah. I'm sure well, you get many. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get all kinds of crazy DMs, but I ignore the ones where people don't realize that I'm not the model. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> insofar as content that I'm going to post or, or help produce, for the most part, the model's already done the vetting, so mm-hmm. I don't have to, you know, I haven't had anyone ask, will you shoot something that I'm not comfortable shooting? Right. But it's already limited by what the model is comfortable producing as content. So it's not as applicable to me. Gotcha. Gotcha. How about as a shout out page, have you, what makes you uncomfortable that the, the foot models ask you to do? Yeah. Uh, well, I've had a couple that I've kind of walked away from, maybe given the, the, the cold ignore when the model definitely puts up my spidey senses that I don't think the age is right. Um, Mm. there's been things where I'm like, oh, no, this is just going to get deleted off my page too fast. I'm not comfortable with your crotch brigade shot there. Oh. The young <laughs> models believe that you need to show your your souls by throwing your feet up in the air and uh, looking at their crotch. It's, it's oh. not necessary within the <laughs> fetish, but they're still kind of leaning towards a vanilla thought process. Right. Um, and I hate right. to turn away, but I've had so much problem with it with obvious trans models if there is the slightest hint, hint of bulge, forget it, it's going to get deleted. I just can't deal with it. Oh. And I feel really bad because I'm one of the few people who will post trans and non-binary on my page without issue. But you've got to right. keep the, unfortunately, you've got to keep the content cleaned by the censors. And that's not even the platform. That's the prudes and the haters. Right. Yeah. Wow. I didn't, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Well, those are all great responses. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> both of you. Um, I feel like we already answered this question, how does one get into the business? So we'll skip that one. Any, this one specifically for you, at what point is a foot world too much and why the breaks? Oh, okay. At what point is it too much? Mm -hmm. When it takes a negative turn, uh, when it gets to be, the demand is too high in terms of just people's attitudes like people are just being really uh nasty and demanding that i do certain things i do well with criticism so it's not so much the criticism that bothers me but it's the constant dms i get i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna say that's it Um, (laughs) when when my inbox starts to be overwhelmed with uh really sexually explicit demanding annoying uh messages uh, then I need to take a break then I and that's why I take a break because for mental health reasons yeah uh, if it's becoming to be too much I look out for me and I'm like I'm just done with this shit for now yeah Uh, and and I never say forever like I know that people go through this like I'm shutting down my account from never coming back and I love it too much to shut it down um, but it, it, it can be overwhelming when I get 20, 30, 40, 50 messages a day asking me to give them foot jobs. It just, you know, <laughs> yeah. Not, not asked of me, but I'll echo because the, sadly, the model category can be equally demanding mm-hmm. and they don't understand why I haven't posted the thing they sent me three weeks ago that. Oh God, even more demanding. Yeah. Or 
had already been on 16 other pages, so why oh, wow. just continue to spread the same stuff? Sure. Um, and so the demands are high, and I've taken weeks off at a time and just disappeared. Or, as Annie's helped me a couple times, just kind of redefine myself a little bit. And this most recent uh, change of going to focusing on my own photography and the, and the podcast and what gives me joy is, uh, you know, she's always helped me figure it's out what the next transition is right. right and that's a direct result of it becoming too much mm-hmm. that's exactly what that is that's 100%. why you know revamping our pages and you know yeah absolutely you know top toes i think is being uh, very <laughs> generous right now with <laughs> what he was saying because yeah. the, you know i'm going to speak for him a little bit here if i can top toes well you can have my inbox <laughs> you know i um you know these uh like people that are coming out or that want him to repost them Mm -hmm. um they don't ask they Mm. don't say please they don't say thank you they don't even say hi they don't bother to follow it's just here are these pictures post them and then immediately followed with why haven't you posted yet and then and and then to top it off you know and if it's a really great picture maybe he'll do it anyway but 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 top it off it's not a picture like they haven't paid enough attention to his page mm. to know that he has a certain aesthetic that he's yeah. sticking to. Right. The most basic one being he's a nylon page. Yeah. Don't send him barefoot pictures and expect him to post them. He's a nylon page. Right. And it just drives me. He's too kind. He's a really nice guy, but it fucking drives me nuts. Like I'm going to punch those girls in the face. Yeah. The For entitlement. <laughs> Oh, now, branding as a podcaster and photographer, it, it's definitely helped because it's very easy to say, no, just not doing that anymore. It's not what I'm into. Good right. for you. Yeah. And, and I tell him, just tell them no. Tell him, I don't need your bare feet on my nylon page, girl. Get it together. Yeah. But he's just so nice. <laughs> he's just so nice guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Top Toes, this is a question for you specifically. Does your girlfriend and wife get jealous of the flirting with other models? So my wife is not involved in in the uh, the foot scene as much, mm. and so she it just she isn't peripheral to it. So there isn't really a jealousy, and we've been in a poly relationship longer that she's used to me flirting with people in the real world and online, and, and it's it's well established. Uh, my girlfriend, being a newer relationship, uh, yeah, I've seen the twinge of jealousy. And I've always mm. said in a poly relationship, jealousy is normal. It's the indication that there's love. It's how you act on that jealousy that's a problem. Right. Um, I guess the last two questions can kind of be morphed into one. So best platforms for promo and is there a site where you can advertise foot fetish content? The only site that I don't think cares that you're advertising foot fetish content right now is OnlyFans. Uh, mm-hmm. I would say FetLife. The platform doesn't care. The people do do. Right. The, the fat lifers still believe that they are representing the, the in-person world. It's transitioning because of COVID, but they're mm-hmm. not huge on using as an advertisement platform. Yeah. Yeah, if, rightfully if, so. If, and I'm going to say, if you want to stay like safe and you don't want to risk being deleted or any of that kind of stuff, you, you should probably stick to um, like actual porn sites. Yeah. So your, your, your porn hub, your AVNs, Many vids, clip stores, those are all places where, yes, you have to share, you know, a part of your, you know, your income, but, and there are fees involved, but it's definitely going to be the safest place where you can advertise freely and definitely. not get in trouble for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To do it solo and, and take 100% of your revenue, Instagram really is, it's not the best place whatsoever, but it's the best place. If you mm-hmm. can navigate the pitfalls, you can get the best reach there. Yeah. You can get the people who are interested in a fetish way without maybe while they're dodging the stigma of literally going to a porn site for it. So it is because by its nature, it's the most social. You definitely get the best reach and find the right people. You just have to tread very lightly. Yeah. Great point. I mean, and they, there are foot fetish websites um, that are, you know, producers that are, that sell content. Some of them, 
will buy your videos off of you and then, you know, sort of resell them. And that could be a good way to promote yourself. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not big in the content, uh, for, you know, creator side of it. Um, mm-hmm. but I know that I've heard a couple of podcasts like mention things like that. So great, great, great options there too. And I guess that's it for all the questions. So I have to ask both of you, where can we find you? Us as a podcast, on every platform that podcasts are on. I keep finding new ones every day. Yes. Just search Oh Those Toes. Uh, If you need to to find ways to connect to us and the podcast, ohthosetoes.teamtoptoes.com kind of functions like a link tree with a bunch of other stuff and show notes and things like that. Okay. Um, You can trail off and find us both from there. Uh, I maintain Team Top teamtoptoes.com the root domain for myself which has all the rest of the links to all my other platforms okay which we've gone over right he's on twitter and yes i i'm not on twitter but i'm on instagram reddit fet life uh i like i said i do have a mini vids and now i have an only fans and um uh, any cutie toes is my instagram miss any is going to be the only fans and the fet life page um but i think you know, uh, the website is going to be your best bet, your best bet. Cause you can get a hold of both of us. Yeah. You know, all the links are there or, or for me personally, email works and he's toes at gmail.com is good. Okay. Yay. Well, I'll be sure to plug all those links in the show notes below. If you guys haven't already checked that out, but that's it for this week. I cannot believe we squeezed so many things. I'm sure we're missing a whole bunch, but this is a huge episode. So any and <laughs> and talk to us. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank Very you welcome. for having us. It's been a blast. Thank you. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you. And everyone, it's Strip by Sia on Instagram. Also my personal, which is Sia Steph. And don't forget to like, rate, share, and subscribe. If you want to write a review for me, that's cool too. Um, if not, then that's that's all gravy as well. But it's new episodes every Sunday, so stay tuned and we'll have another new episode out next week. Bye. Uh. You're listening to Strip by Sia, hosted, produced, and edited by Steph Sia, artwork by Maria Bellandorama, music by Ted D, and photography by Ian Davern.